Hey, uh, what are we making this week? Oh, uh, how about something from Far Cry New Dawn? All right. What do you want to make from that? Uh, how about uh, the judge? Uh, we'll do his mask. All right. Sounds good. That's awesome. Uh, tell you what, meet me in the shop. I'll be in there in like five minutes. I have a little more work to do. Ooh, nice shot, judge. High five. What? What? This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome down to the shop. Bill here, and today I'm making something from one of my favorite recent video games, Far Cry New Dawn. Boom, it's the judge's mask. I have been playing the crap out of this game. I leveled the judge all the way up and he shoots a ton of arrows, it's amazing. Uh, so I figured the mask would be a really fun project I could probably crank out in like a day or two. I already have all the materials I need, so why don't we just dive right in. These reference images are actually from Ubisoft. They released a whole character reference image pack uh, I blew this up in Photoshop so it was the right size for my face and then I just traced the outline in Sharpie to make it a little more obvious where everything is. I've got a side view and a front view and that should be enough for us to be able to make a foam pattern out of it. And yes, I'm making this out of EVA foam. It's gonna be all super old school, but we're gonna start with a different kind of foam. This is insulation foam that I got from the hardware store down the street. Uh, it comes in large sheets. I just cut it down to a manageable size and I have two pieces I need to glue together. The side view of my part is a little bit taller than one piece of foam, hence the need for two of them. So to glue them together, I'm gonna grab some spray adhesive. I'm gonna spray the adhesive on both sides then let it sit for about 30 seconds and then press them together. One side down. There's adhesive on both sides. They've had plenty of time to dry, uh, about a minute. And now I can just stick them together and press it down. Now that'll provide a pretty strong bond. Um, if this was gonna be permanent, we'd let it dry for a lot longer. Uh, but we're gonna start cutting this out now because we only really need this once we get our pattern, then we can throw it away. This line, I use this to cut wood uh, with a circular saw on the floor. So there's a little line there, but we're gonna chew through that. Don't worry about it. The pattern just goes on there and I can trace it. And this is just from the front view. We'll use the side view later to figure out the depth and sort of contour, but this will get us the primary front on shape of the mask. Oop, there we go. I wanna cut out the perimeter here and I could totally use this handsaw and just sort of cut slices off, but I'm gonna move this over to the bandsaw. The next thing I'm gonna do is drill out the eyes and I grabbed a spade bit because it's long enough to go all the way through our foam here. So it turns out my drill press won't travel far enough to go all the way through, so I have my hand drill and I'm just gonna finish it up by hand, just making sure I'm staying as perpendicular to this surface as possible. The plan is to use this spindle sander to clear out all of this, but it's not quite tall enough. I don't need all of this material, so I'm gonna slice a little bit off. We have a little bit less to work with. Let's do that on the bandsaw. It's too big for the bandsaw. Too tall anyway, though there's not enough clearance here. So I'm gonna have to cut that by hand. So we don't need all of this material up here. We can lose a little more than an inch, but I'm, I'm gonna leave some extra. So I think I'll take an inch off of here. And I can use my one, two, three block to mark that because it is an inch tall. So I can just kind of go around like that and draw my line. This is why even though I have uh, several band saws, I keep hand saws on hand. They are very useful. I'm just gonna trace that line until I get a good groove going and then I'll go through the whole thing. Ta-da! This'll be the back, so I don't care that it's kinda, kinda messed up. 
There we go. Time to do some sanding. Our mask is cut out. We got the front profile done, but now we want to get the side profile. I don't have a view of the top, so I'm going to have to eyeball that, but I can take my side view and get a rough idea of what the profile ought to look like. Now this is probably a little, a little higher than that since I rolled it over, but I'll, I'll figure it out as I trim it because obviously the bottom of the chin should go all the way down there. So this might be more like, that's the bottom there, maybe more like that. Uh, the good news is I can whittle my way down to the profile that I want, kind of sneak up on it if you will. Now it's time to start hacking away at this to get it down to the form that we want. And I have my saw again, but it would be really great if I had like an electric version of this. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> Here we go. That's pretty great. That doesn't leave a lot of dust. I like it. So I'm hacking pieces off to kind of match this profile, leaving plenty of extra so I have room to refine it later, but this is really just carving away the bulk of it. I don't have a top-down view, so I'm kind of guessing on the profile here. Uh, this thing is working pretty well. If you own a hot wire cutter, this is a great application for that. I don't have one, so I'm going to go with the electric knife. For the rest of the forming, I'm going to go with sandpaper. This is 100 grit. You could even go a little bit more aggressive than that, but I'm not using any power tools. This foam is really easy to dent with just a fingernail. So like a file or something might just rip into it. So I'm going to do the rest by hand and again, just sneak up on that last form. Concentrate on the, on the side profile that I'm pretty confident about and then try and uh, feather the rest of it together. Perfectly clean. <laughs> the basic form of our mask is done. And in fact, you could finish this to be a wearable mask. You could scoop out the back of it and seal it somehow, but I'm gonna turn it into a pattern that we can then use on EVA foam. And then that pattern can be reused. In fact, I'll link it down below. So long as I don't goof it up in between now and then. The first thing I wanna do is wrap up my mask in plastic wrap. You can use stuff from your kitchen. I just happen to have this stuff here. And this is gonna create a protective barrier between our mask and the duct tape we're gonna put on it in a little bit. Now that it's all wrapped up, I can cover it in duct tape. And this is the cheap stuff. Don't waste your good duct tape on this because we're just gonna end up throwing it out. And uh, we'll re-register those eyes in a little bit. Here's our duct tape form, just about ready to go. I doubled up the duct tape in both directions just to make it nice and durable so it doesn't fall apart when I peel it off. I'm gonna start by cutting out a rough idea of where the eyeballs go. We'll uh, widen that as we kind of figure out where the edge is. The next thing I need to do is figure out roughly where my seams need to go so I can cut this out and lay it flat and make our pattern. I'm thinking the obvious choice is right down the middle. I'm thinking the other one will just be right across the eyes like so. I'm not too worried about this not being symmetrical. It's supposed to look like it's hand carved out of wood. So I'm going to pattern both sides and if they're a little different, that's, that's quite okay. I also want to include some registration marks. These will be used to line everything up later. I could also start labeling stuff too. So like this seam here could be A. Maybe this seam here is B and so on. I think I am going to start by 
trying to cut the whole mask off. And again, if this seam ends up being a little wobbly, that just adds to the rustic charm of this hand carved mask. Get rid of that. And this should pop right off. Oh, look at that. I can even wear it. Hey, wait, hold on. <laughs> I have no nose to hold my glasses. <laughs> uh, I think this is gonna work. Now we can cut it apart. This really does not want to lay flat, probably because I used two layers of duct tape. And it seems like the scissors are the best way to cut it apart. One down. It's in two pieces now and it still doesn't want to lay flat. So that's why we have the other seam there. Now hopefully these want to lay flat, but we may have to include some more darts. Yeah, that's still not quite round enough, so we may need to add a couple darts, but that's okay. We'll figure that out in a minute. Because these won't lay flat, I'm gonna cut a slit in them. If this doesn't work, I can tape it back together and try it in a different location, but I, I'm pretty confident that it's gonna work. Also, before I cut it, I'm gonna add a couple of registration lines here. That'll help us stitch it back together. Just like that, it lays much flatter. Awesome, so I'll do that to the rest of them and we'll be good to go. These patterns will be transferred to paper, but before I do that, I'm gonna use this pattern notching tool to notch all of my registration marks. That way I can transfer them to the paper. And these just take a little bite out of the edge there, so we have a little notch. I'm transferring my patterns to some thicker cardstock paper. This is gonna be a lot easier to manage when I'm dealing with my foam, have a nice flat pattern piece, and making sure to trace all of these little notches that I added. These are gonna be critical later when I'm gluing my foam together to make sure that these seams are glued together nice and lined up. And there we go. I can transfer my notes, and yeah, let's do them all like that. There we go, my patterns are nice and flat and laid out. I can cut them out so that I can use them to make my foam parts. I will eventually go and trace this as a vector and have a downloadable file so you can follow along if you want. But uh, I wanted to showcase the whole process so that you could do this with literally any mask that you want. This type of patterning is really common with things like, well, anything with a compound curve, like a mask or a shoulder bell, like shoulder armor that's kind of bell-shaped. This is totally how you would do that, same exact way. We will be making our mask out of EVA foam. This piece is about 10 millimeters thick, I would say, half inch-ish. And I can just chuck my patterns over there and trace them out. For this dark foam, I'm using a white marker. These things are super useful for painting or drawing on foam. And again, I'm making sure to get those registration marks there so that when I put all this together, it'll line up perfectly. And there we go. I'm gonna avoid drawing too much stuff on there so I don't have to remove it later, but I'll keep this pattern as a reference. First thing I'll do is cut this into some smaller pieces so it's a little easier to work with. I've got my sharpener here and I'm gonna make sure my blade is super, super sharp. Wanna make sure these cuts are as clean as possible. Make sure the blade doesn't wander. Nice perpendicular cuts right along that line. The dart here, I'm using a smaller knife, I have a little more control. Make sure I cut all the way down to the mat and then pull it all the way through nice and, nice and slowly. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side over here. There we go, when we glue that together, it should help us make the, uh, the appropriate form. I'm gonna cut the eye out, but I'm leaving a little extra material. Uh, once this is glued together, I will uh, use the rotary tool to clean that up. The next thing I wanna do is preform this a little bit, get it closer to that rounded shape, and I need heat to do that, make this nice and soft. I also put a piece of wood down so I don't melt my cutting mat, and I also have a foam anvil this one's actually from Evil Ted. Thanks, Ted. And I'm gonna use that to help round over the forms like this.
This will help give it that complex curve that we want. When we glue the seams together, that'll really kind of finish it off for us, but this, this helps it get closer to that sooner. So this is what it looks like after, that's what it looked like before. We have just a little bit of pre-curve in it, and that's gonna help us out a ton later. For the gluing, I'll be using contact cement, and I'm gonna start with all the darts. So I'll do all the darts first, and then I'll attach all the parts together. I think I'm gonna brush two layers of contact cement on. I'm making sure I cover everything, but I also don't wanna have any pooling, so I can use a little foam scrap to help spread it. And then in the gap right there, I just wanna make sure I don't have a big old pool of glue waiting for me. So I'm gonna brush this one layer on, give it about five minutes to dry, and then brush the second layer on. And while I'm doing all of it, I'm gonna put on my respirator. It's been about five minutes. There's two layers of barge on here, and now I can stick them together. And this is when those registration marks come in handy. because I wanna make sure that this seams goes together exactly the way it came apart, just like that. And I can push really hard to get that seam to stick together. And that's pretty good. That's, that's eh, just about as clean as I could get a seam like that. We'll have a way to um, hide that later, I'll show you. Uh, but for now, I gotta get the rest of these stuck together. Just trying to make sure that the two sides come together at the same level, as, as flush as possible. Ugh, there we go. Our parts are almost ready to go. They just need to get glued together along the other seam. So I'm gonna do the same thing using my barge. I'm gonna go over and brush all the edges that have registration marks on them. Those are the ones that are gonna get glued together. Just like before, brush on two thin layers and then I can uh, stick all my parts together. And of course, I'll be wearing my respirator. That's the one. Oh, let me finish the seam. I'll just do this one seam. Okay, fine, I'll put it on. <laughs> I have two layers of barge and all my seams are ready to go. I think I'm gonna attach the two sides and then attach those together. That way I can make sure my eyes are nice and lined up. I always really take my time when I'm putting seams together like this. And the eyeball goes there. And I really push those seams together. There we go. There is a cat hair. It looks like a willow hair. She's the fluffy one. Good, I'm sure there's no more cat hair on this prop. <laughs> it's perfectly clean. And we want to be able to make this seam vanish when we do our finishing work, so we're gonna help ourselves out by really focusing and making sure that it's nice and even. I'm really just kind of lining everything up right now. It's sticking because I put two layers of barge on there, but I'll come back once it's lined up and press it all together to form a more secure bond. Yeah. So now I'll push it together. I'll even push the seam in so that the top half of it, this side compared to this side, the top half will press together. That's the side that matters. If the back isn't perfectly lined up, who cares? We're never gonna see that. But the top, we want to look really nice. This is what we have so far, and this is what we were kind of going for. Obviously, this needs to be shaped a little bit more. I'll use the heat gun to warm it up and do more of the shaping. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna give the seams a little bit more time to dry, and I need to enlarge these eyes a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my rotary tool, start doing a little work on those fellas. More progress, I use my rotary tool to clean up all the edges, just sort of round them over so they're nice and smooth. But I also did a little bit of sculpting around the eyes. The reference here is fairly plain, but we can see there's some, some shading under the brow there, so it should be a little bit contoured. And I can sneak up on that a little bit more later. But now is time to do a little more heat forming because the, the profile of this isn't quite the same as our reference, so I'm gonna heat it up with the heat gun do some more hand forming. The jaw bottom part is much more slender like that. And it may take a couple of tries. I may have to heat it up a couple times, but I'll get it there. You do want to be careful. The, uh, the glue seams are still fresh and that heat can start splitting it out. So if you heat it up too much, your seams might fall apart. Just a little bit of a balancing act. That's getting, it's getting closer. Looks like the top needs to come in a little bit too. 
While I'm working on that, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in categories like design, photography, crafts, and more. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes made by experts in their field. That way you can learn new skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. I've watched a bunch of their classes. I love them. I especially love the one from our friend Jazza. It's about running a YouTube channel. That class is called Stand Out and Make Money on YouTube, and it's fantastic. The knowledge I gathered in Jazza's class is stuff that I use every single day growing the Punish Props Academy channel. Skillshare is also more affordable than other learning platforms out there. An annual subscription costs you less than 10 bucks a month. And even better, they're giving you the opportunity to try it out for free. That's right, the first 500 people to use a link down below will get a two month free trial. That link is skl.sh forward slash punished props. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and providing a valuable resource to creative types like me. All right, let's get back to the build. A little bit thinner, I think we're there. I think the next thing we need to do is think about all that wood grain. For our wood grain, I'm gonna draw it on freehand using my reference. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is draw it on with a white marker and then we'll go use a wood burner to uh, make the permanent changes. This is, uh, there's some battle damage on there too and that's gonna have to be deeper, I think. So there's like this X here. I'll just make it a little thicker on here so I know that needs to be deeper. To add my wood grain, I've got a wood burner or a soldering iron would work too. One important thing, you definitely don't wanna breathe in the smoke coming off of burnt EVA foam. Obviously, very well ventilated area. We have a fan as well. If you're doing this at home, I recommend doing it outside. You can already tell how much that texture adds to the, the mask, and I'm really excited with how it's turning out. Stick that there. There we go. So this area where I glued it is eventually where we're gonna put a strap, some elastic or something to hold it on my head. For now, I have this on there so I can hold it. And then once that's fully cured, I can just cut this out and put my face in there. It's finally time to tackle some of these seams. Now I did an okay job of hiding them, but just to make sure that they go away completely, I'm gonna fill them in with some quick seal. There we go. And then I can just use a damp finger to level that out. Might take a couple layers, but that'll, that'll help us out a lot. This will dry kind of shiny. And if you were gonna just paint, put paint right over it, it would be really obvious that that's where you did some work. We're gonna go over this with a sealant um, and that will make the, t the sort of shininess match. So the, this part will be shiny, this part won't be, but if we cover the whole thing in and Mod Podge, then it'll all be the same, the same shininess. Our quick seal is all dry. I left it overnight just to make sure and it looks pretty good. Now it's time to seal it. And for the sealing, I've decided to go with uh, Mod Podge. Any other PVA should work pretty well. Uh, I chose this one specifically because it leaves brush strokes, which normally is not ideal. But in this case, I wanna put the brush strokes on in a way that follows the wood grain and hopefully add a little bit of texture. First, I just wanna cover it. And if you thin this with a little bit of water, it would, it would cover better and probably not leave as many brush strokes. But I want that, so I'm just going nutty. I'm just going to cover it. Make sure I get it down in the cracks there. Uh, and I'm just covering it the best I can right now and then I'll go back over it and sort of even out the brush strokes. What the ceiling does for us is it makes the surface of the foam nice and uniform. It also makes it really good at grabbing onto paint. A lot of times the cut edges of foam, the sort of fuzzy edges, 
will soak up the paint and uh, it'll leave this, the, the paint finish really inconsistent. And there's a lot of different ways to seal foam. We have, we have a, a handful of different videos. This is also great because I don't need to work outside. I'm not spraying anything. It's all hand brushed. So if you work in a small environment like a, a dorm room or a, a bedroom, this is a really good option. It's all hand brushed. The layers I've already put on are starting to gel up a little bit and eventually it'll, when I manipulate it, it'll start pilling, which I don't want. But right now it's at this nice state where I can almost sculpt in these brush strokes like they are wood grain. But once it starts to kind of clump up as you, you brush it, you're done. You gotta let it dry. But right now, woo! I thought about brushing it all up on the inside here, but I need to glue some foam in there so that it's comfortable on my face and I need to glue straps and some cloth. So I'm not gonna cover the inside of it. I don't think that's necessary. Got a clamp on a stick and I will use that to hold it while it dries. We let the Mod Podge dry for about an hour and it's looking great. I love the texture on here. So I don't think I need to put a second layer on. Um, the deeper parts haven't fully dried yet. There's still some lighter Mod Podge in there. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just gonna move forward and start painting this. I mean, when has my impatience ever bit me in the face? It should be fine. That looks nice. Ooh, look at that. I did a poor job of sealing that. The next thing I wanna do then is to prime this so we have a nice, even base coat of paint. My primer is a little cold because it's just been sitting in the shop. I'm gonna put it in a bucket of warm water to warm it up for about 10 minutes. Because remember, friends don't let friends spray paint with paint that's too cold to, to paint. Right, okay, good. I love how this is turning out. The uh, primer did a pretty good job of covering everything. The texture looks really nice. So now it's time to do the painting. And I'm gonna do it all by hand with a brush. I have some acrylic paints here. I like my heavy body ones. These Liquitex ones are great. I don't have any white, so I'm using this white here. It should be just fine. I don't want it to be pure white. I want it to have a little bit of warmth. So I'm mixing in a little bit of this, uh, what is this, raw sienna just to darken it a little bit. And I might do a couple of passes um, with a couple of different values to mix it up a little bit. We'll see. Yeah, that'll do, I think. This first pass, and you can see just how much warmer that is than the base primer. This first pass is really just to get coverage and make sure everything is uh, got a layer of paint on it. This is my second layer. I think this will be enough. There's a couple spots where the paint's a little thin, so I'm just making sure I get everything nice and covered. Oh, hi there. <laughs> the paint is mostly dry, so I'm gonna move on and seal it with some varnish. I wanted to do some weathering over this with more acrylic paints. I wanna make sure they don't interact with the paints I put down, so a couple good coats of varnish. I like varnish because it stays flexible and also dries really fast. It's time to do some weathering. I really wanna get some paint down into these crevices that I did with the wood burning tool. And I have more of my acrylic paints ready to go. Nothing too crazy here, just like black and brown. I really just wanna get that contrast and smudge this surface up a little bit. Do a quick little test here. Make sure it looks the way I want it to look before I commit to the whole thing. Take a cloth. And it's not all coming off, so I'm gonna the cloth all wet and that can wipe away any extra that I want. And that's, that's quite a lot there. I might uh, thin this a little bit more. Doing one more wash of much lighter brown, just to lighten these lines even more. Fortunately, all these layers we put on will mingle and help create a more complex finish. I think that looks pretty great. Don't need this anymore. Can go away. Mer. Almost done, just a couple more final touches. You cannot see the judge's eyes. So, I have some sheer black cloth. Now, I can see through this just fine 
up close to me, but you probably can't see in. I can see in. <laughs> when it's in the mask, I promise you won't be able to see in. <laughs> to help the hot glue stick to the foam, I'm just going to put some score marks around where the glue is going to go. This will let the glue seep into those cuts I'm doing and it will bond much better that way. I can hit that with a heat gun and open it up. Just gonna tack one side down first. Let's get this kind of lined up. All right, now I can peel that back and it's not gonna run away on us and we can do the rest of it. Go. Meh. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Very effective. To cut out the extra eye bits, I have my wood burner here and I can just trace around it. And the good news about this is it should keep the ends, the cut ends from fraying because they are melted. <laughs> Hopefully it comes right out. Nice. That was hot glue, <laughs> it peeled up. Ta-da! To attach this guy to my face, I wanna put a strap around it and I could just use elastic and I am still gonna use a little bit of elastic, but I figured to make it look a little more authentic, I could use some leather. I happen to have some right here. Uh, I don't know what kind of leather this is, uh, but I'm not gonna condition it or stain it or anything. I'm just gonna go with this color. Um, I do want to attach it to the mask with a little bit of elastic so it's got some give, hopefully to make it more comfortable. But the first thing I need to do is cut out some leather straps. I have a buckle here and uh, that's the width I'm gonna cut my straps. This is set up for three quarter inch wide straps, so I've got it set here on my strap cutter. I cut a little more than I, I would need to fit through so I can pull it. This seems like a much easier way to do this. Oh, look at that. So just cut it to get it started and then you can pull it through. That looks great. Kind of makes me wish I had asked our buddy Bjorn a few more questions about this tool when we had him in the shop. But I did learn a lot of other leatherworking stuff in that project. That's a good video too. To attach the buckle to here, I'm gonna punch a slot in it. This will go around in there. So right here is kind of where I want the slot to go. And I have a slot punch. You could just punch two holes and then connect them with a sharp knife, but if you've got one of these things, they are awfully handy. Perfect. So that goes around there, just like that. Perfect. Now I'll punch a hole in here and we can rivet that thing together. This can go through like that. I'm gonna double check everything looks correct. Very good. And then I'll put my cap on and set that in there. This is domed, so that's gonna go on the top. And once again, we're gonna Hit it with a hammer. Excellent. So that's one side and then the other side will just cut a nice decorative end on it and punch some holes in it. And then I'm just gonna make a mark every eh, half inch or so. Give it a shot. That would go in like that. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. All right, I'll go punch the rest of them. Not gonna win any awards with that hole punching, but it'll get the job done. Now I can put that through there and tuck this through there and leave that. Now this gives me room to adjust it, but I will fit this into the mask as it is so that it fits me very well. But if someone else wants to wear it, they could adjust it. Next step will be some elastic and I'm cutting an arbitrary length of it here, more than I need so that I can trim it down later. I'm gonna glue this in first and then we can attach the leather to it like so. I've already scored that area with the knife. Hopefully that helps this hot glue stick a little nicer. Here we go. I'm gonna stick that down and then I like to put hot glue around the edge of it to help keep it from peeling up and then across the back here so that hopefully it won't pull off this way. To test this out, I've got these little clips usually used for sewing. I'm gonna use them to clip my leather to the elastic temporarily, so I can do a little bit of a fitting. Let's see if it fits on. This handsome gentleman, that's actually very close. I think I can attach it just like that. Like that, like that. This should be able to go through there, no problem. Sure thing. 
I don't think I can get in here with a hammer to do this rivet, so Britt had an idea. I'm gonna use these vice grips. I'm also going to wrap a piece of leather around it so I don't totally ruin the surface finish on that rivet. Let's see how it goes. That, uh, that actually worked really well. It's a little dinged up, but it's the post-apocalyptic world. I think we can say that looks all right. To protect my face, got some nice squishy upholstery foam. Just gonna cut off a hunk of this. This can go in where my forehead goes, so it doesn't need to be quite that long. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bevel on that and put a little bevel on that so that it'll fit in there all nice and snug. Fitting number two, nice and squishy thing for my face. All right, kind of comfortable. My nose is touching, but I may put some foam where my cheeks are to, to push it away a tiny bit, but overall that's pretty good. And stick. Guess this is us now. That should do it. All I have to do is put it on. There is the judge face mask build. Uh, of course, I just threw a uh, sort of Harry Potter style cape that we had lying around on him, but it looks pretty good. And who knows, maybe at some point in the future, I'll, I'll build the rest of the costume. It's not a promise. It's a maybe. It's a very solid maybe. Thanks so much for hanging out with the build. If you want to try this one out, the uh, pattern that I made for this, that'll be free on our website. Link will be down in the description. You can download it and print it out and try and make it yourself. But this is also a fairly good sort of generic mask shape, so you could probably use it to build any number of other character faces or masks. As always, the tools and materials that we use for this project are linked down below in the description. And of course, I want to thank our sponsor again, Skillshare. It's a really fantastic website. I go there to learn all sorts of wonderful stuff. You can get uh, free access for two months if you're one of the first 500 people to hit that link. That's skl.sh forward slash punish props. That'll do it for this build today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in the shop and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, what are we making this week? <laughs> Where'd you make the mask? That's on screen. We should also do that again. <laughs> Time to do some weathering, especially the deep parts I got with the wood barning tool. Barning? Barning.